Hey folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. First of all, thank you once again for the amazing support on the videos. We're already up to 170 subscribers and I'm going to have to start thinking about doing a 250 sub special at this rate. I really, really appreciate it. It is unbelievable and I am honoured. Another thing I've been having some issues with is video stuttering um, on the last couple of videos. They don't show up until I upload the video. I think it's something to do with my transcoder settings, but I'll do my best to remedy it. it. Let me know if you still have any sort of stuttering in the videos, and I will continue investigating. So, on with the show. A lot of people have been asking for an AA flat cannon, and honestly, it's been giving me a lot of trouble too. So, I asked Ruger for a little help. Now. Ruger hasn't had a lot of time to play with the new cannons, but he has watched my tutorials and um, he managed to come up with this beautiful little creation here. Now, this is Ruger's sort of sensible AA flacker. It's a practical 250mm double barrel. Uh, it's got heavy recoil dampening and it's sort of effective for use on a smaller ship. It's got a 0 0.04 refire, which isn't crazy high. And with this relatively low fire rate and only five and a half thousand recoil, um, which is quite respectable, and I think he's dropped that further, it you can just bolt it onto some well, quite small ships. Now, as an example, we'll come over here. Here is the Rottweiler, and I have outfitted it with a new AA cannon. Um, it's this is one of the boats from my Let's Play series, and hold on, I'll, I'll actually spawn a default Rottweiler in, just so that you can have a look at and compare the difference. Here we go. Let's play so many bloody blueprints. Here we go. And turn the AI off. Stop. Or he shoots away. Now you can see it's actually a smaller cannon than the other one. And if we go in here can see just roughly the profile that this takes up. Now this one is slightly bigger on the inside. Um, just just slightly, but it does have room to turn effectively. Ooh. And I have managed to get the AA, oh, the ammo box boxes and stuff like that all in here. So hurrah! And that just shows that it's not too hard to actually fit some of these um, some of these things into another ship. I would say that this 250mm is actually probably more powerful than this cannon here. Um, and I'll, I'll demonstrate just what it does very shortly. I'll give you a little montage. Um, so the shells that this, well, sorry, first of all, now a very, very important component that you have to consider here, and this is one of the key things for using a there we go. There's the boy I'm looking for. Making flak turrets. And that's this laser targeter. Now, I've had trouble getting this to connect to things, and I think it actually has to be either connected directly to the firing pin or onto a six-way connector. And you, you wouldn't believe the amount of time I have wasted trying to figure out whether this is working or not, because I'll just show you in the UI. Um, it shows a current fuse time there. If it's not connected properly, it doesn't give you any feedback. It just says no fuse time set and that's the same as what it says if it is connected. So you really just have to bolt these onto a six-way connector just to be sure that it's working properly. But yeah, uh, something to bear in mind. But that's a very important component to making these uh, flat cannons work considering the altitude fuses and uh, the proximity fuses don't seem to be working correctly in the current build. Now, when that changes, you won't have to do this. You can use other other options, but just something to bear in mind. So let's get out of this build mode again, um, and we'll we'll talk about the shells now. First of all, the laser targeter is on default settings, so don't need to worry about actually configuring it. Where am I going? We can actually just go into the one in here. Yeah, right. There's the shell. Um, uses two powder charges for. This not not exceptional 200 muzzle velocity. Um, it's got the timed fuse, and honestly, this doesn't the setting doesn't matter terribly much because it's going to be controlled by the laser targeter anyway. You can cut this back if you want to um, sort of not waste so much time. 
but bear in mind that 200 meters per second, if it maintains that velocity, it'll travel a kilometer in five seconds. So at 15, this means that you've got three kilometer range and these shells don't have that range. So if you want to cut down on spam or even just to like reduce your, uh, or improve your frame rate a little bit, just to have less shells and stuff in the air, you can actually cut this down to, in this case, we're probably never going to be shooting farther than a kilometer, so we could cut this down to maybe six or seven seconds, and that means that it'll not spam as much. Um, the shells will decay faster, they'll disappear faster, and all will be right with the world. Um, now, it also uses a high explosive warhead. Now, AA flak. High explosive? What are you doing? Well, in the current dev build, high explosive is extremely powerful. And flak is actually pretty weak. Um, it's not completely rubbish, but it's, it's a little weak. But most importantly, above all else, the HE flacker gives these amazing little explosions that look like the old British flak turrets, the little pom-pom effect, and oh, it's so cool. So, I'll do a little montage and when we come back, I'm I'm going to demonstrate flak. But to demonstrate this, we'll not we're not going to use this guy. And but I'll I'll show uh, I'll show this guy firing and kicking some ass. But whenever we come back, we'll be using Sandra. Everyone loves Sandra. And I'll show you how you can use something like Sandra to configure this round and maybe improve it. And I'll like I say, demonstrate flak warheads as well, so that you know, sort of how uh, how we arrived at this high explosive idea. So, a little montage time, and we'll be right back. Okay, so here we are with Sandra, my 6,000 round per minute test cannon, and you can see her in action in my subscriber special. But for this test, I have reconfigured her a little bit. With a firing delay and a slightly longer barrel, this matches up nicely with Ruger's AA flacker, so this is in effect the same cannon, uh, despite the size. So let's have a look at the frag shell I'm going to be using here. Let's hop over here. Uh, we have a frag warhead body, and this is essentially exactly the same as the high explosive shell, but with the frag body instead. And I have this set to a 45 degree angle, it defaults to 60. I find this is a little bit better for like concentrating the burst. Uh, another thing when using frag shells is you have to consider, or you have to use a laser targeter and set it to de detonate before the target. So, I've got a laser targeter here, uh, let's set this to negative 5 and I'll start off uh, demonstrating this type of shell. Now you can tweak these settings to increase the spread of your fragments without hampering your dispersal too much. So if you use a wider cone on your frags, you will get a much higher spread, but you can then tune the laser targeter to explode closer to your target. Um, these two values make a huge difference in the effectiveness of your frags. Here's a few examples of different shell configurations. I'll not be changing the main body of the shell. This will remain um, always two powder and a timed fuse. And I'll show the different frags, uh, the different frag angle angles and timings and the HE warhead for comparison. I'll only be using a Deepwater Guard duster for testing as they offer a nice consistent test platform. They're not too fast and too hard to hit, but they're jiggly enough in the air that they provide a little bit of a sort of a challenge for the cannons. As you can see, the different settings make a big difference to the frag shell's effectiveness. 
You can definitely get good results using frags, but the devil is in the details of tweaking it to be just perfect. A problem I find with this entire time delay concept is the speed of the aircraft is also a massive factor. Faster aircraft can be nearly impossible to hit without very high muzzle velocity, and that's a different story for a different day. But as a practical cannon can that can take out most any sort of slower flying aircraft in short order, you can't go too far wrong with this 2 powder, time fuse and HE setup. Just don't forget that laser targeter for extra eye candy and the chance of glancing blows. Now, I'm not going to be doing a build of the cannon on camera, and I understand this isn't really a tutorial video. If you have a look at the minigun tutorial that I put up, it gives you all the information you need to build a cannon to fire this shell type at your desired fire rating. I thought it would at least show off some of the testing we've been doing, and I hope it's useful to some of you guys to make your own AA cannons, or at least help in the decision making process in designing your shells. If you have any more luck than I have, or me and Ruger have had, please let me know because I would really love to improve this, this whole design and uh, find a really, really good frag shell. Now it's time to wrap up the episode, but before I go, I want to make you aware of a really useful little tool that one of the subscribers has put together. Special thanks to Nicholas Glendening for this awesomely useful multi-barrel gauge tool. If you want to make a multi-barrel cannon, you can use this nifty little spreadsheet to get the exact gauge settings you need for the barrel quantity, and it saves a whole pile of tweaking. I really recommend getting yourself a copy, there's a link in the video description. I really hope you enjoyed the video, uh, any likes, subs or comments are really really awesome, I love hearing from you guys, thank you once again for all the incredible support over the last couple of days, um, as always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.